Julio Cesar Chavez for the WBA World Lightweight Championship. Mark Freeland's long-anticipated welterweight title reign had just begun when he mounted a title defense against Marlon Starling last August. But Starling refused to show respect to the celebrated young champion. Trailing after 10 rounds, the more experienced challenger seized the moment and handed Breland his first professional loss. For Starling, a major upset. For Breland, a stunning setback. Tonight, they meet once again as Marlon Starling defends his WBA World Welterweight crown against former champion Mark Breland. From the Las Vegas Hilton in Las Vegas, Nevada, as HBO Sports presents a doubleheader episode of World Championship Boxing. First, Julio Cesar Chavez will defend his WBA lightweight crown against number one contender Rodolfo Aguilar of Panama. And then, in what may well be a classic rematch, welterweight champion Marlon Starling will face former title holder Mark Breland. Both bouts are scheduled for 12 rounds. So a large and knowledgeable boxing crowd continues to file into the Hilton here in the early evening hours essentially to watch two questions being answered. How exciting, how impressive will Chavez be in his lightweight defense as he continues to cement his identity in the minds of the American boxing public? And can Mark Freeland, Olympic gold medalist ticketed for stardom, avenge the only defeat of his professional career and regain not only a world title but also the mantle of stardom that he carried for so long? Hello, I'm Jim Lampley. The first bout you will see this evening is the lightweight defense, Chavez against Aguilar. But later on in the evening, we will see the two welterweights, Starling and Breland. And the Breland experience, Olympic gold medalists, stardom in early professional career, and then having to face up to a difficult defeat is one that our own Ray Leonard has shared. Ray, how do you see Mark reacting to his loss to Starling last August? It's a big obstacle that he must face. First of all, whether or not he's second-guessing himself, whether or not he thought last fight was a fluke, whether or not he can regain his composure, come back and be the Mark Breland that he was in the past, try to outbox Marlon Stalin. But you know something? It's all mental. And I think that's what's facing uh, Mark Breland. All right, and we'll see later on what you think about his ability to overcome that mental challenge. But first, Julio Cesar Chavez in his title defense and Larry Merchant. Many are now calling Chavez, pound for pound, the best boxer in the world. Do you think he is? Well, if he isn't, he's the heir apparent, and very apparent, I might add. Whenever we have a dominant heavyweight champion, such as we have now in Mike Tyson, we boxing degenerates feel this irresistible urge to crown this other best fighter in the world. In past eras, they've been Henry Armstrong, Sugar Ray Robinson, Roberto Duran, and even this fellow over here, Ray Leonard. The problem that Chavez has is that he's a foreigner, and that means he's going to have to be impressive. Look the role of that fighter every single time out, and that's very difficult, and we'll see how difficult it is tonight when he faces a man whose primary mission may simply be to survive. Indeed, Julio Cesar Chavez has won 56 bouts in a row officially. He says 57. One knockout has gotten lost. Here now, a closer look at the Mexican star of the lightweight division, Julio Cesar Chavez. In 1987, Mike Tyson brought order to the heavyweight division with a devastating string of knockouts. The year also saw Sugar Ray Leonard stun the boxing world with his comeback upset win over marvelous Marvin Hagler. But neither of those illustrious stars was the man boxing writers chose as fighter of the year. That instead was Julio Cesar Chavez, the undefeated lightweight champion of whom it is now fashionable to say, best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Chavez's talents begin with a definition of the art of self-defense. He picks off punches with his arms and hands with amazing consistency. And what few openings he does leave an opponent are at the top of his head or on his shoulders, areas where punches have little chance of doing damage. Over the course of a fight, 
the quantity of punches blocked by Chavez or missed by his opponents accumulates. An example, former world champion Edwin Rosario, who landed 52% of his punches against Livingston Bramble and 63% against Jose Luis Ramirez. But look at how inefficient he was against Chavez. Or maybe, consider how inefficient Chavez made Rosario to appear. I believe I was born with my defensive abilities. You don't develop them in the ring. Of course, if you make a mistake in the ring, certain things can be taught. Or learned. When the fighting is in close, Chavez has learned to keep his elbows in tight to his body, protecting his rib and kidney areas. He also uses his own elbows and arms to push off his opponent and create open avenues of attack. When attacking, some fighters offer wide, looping punches, which leave them open to counterattack. Chavez prefers short, straight punches to the body, which not only offer protection, but efficiently wear down his opponents. Hitting the body is fatal, because little by little, if you begin to hit your rival, keep hitting his body, then between rounds, your rival begins to lose his speed and strength. There is a saying that if you hit the body, the head will fall on its own. Indeed, the Chavez attack merely begins at the body. Against Rosario, he landed a remarkable 61% of his punches. In punch stack computations, other lightweights are shown to be far less efficient. Greg Haugen landing 48%, Jose Luis Ramirez 25%, Hector Camacho 24%. This efficiency can in part be attributed to a training load which separates Chavez from most other fighters. Chavez does little speed and heavy bag work, concentrating instead on constant sparring. His wars in the ring go on for 10 rounds per day, six days per week, an extreme training pace. I never stop training, I always train. These last three months have been hard. It is the same for all my fights. I am always conscientious about my work. Julio Cesar Chavez has neither the global fame of a Mike Tyson, nor the charismatic image of a Sugar Ray Leonard. What he has is boxing expertise and sufficient mastery of the sweet science to rank among sophisticates as the sport's most finished and refined current product. So you saw there the technical skills which elevate Chavez to the rank where many hold him now at the top of the sport. Tonight, however, Ray Leonard, he faces for the first time in his career a southpaw fighter. How difficult a challenge is that likely to be? That's amazing. I mean, 57 fights, he's never faced a southpaw. It could prove to be a problem and a factor because with the height of Aguilar, his height and reach advantage, and being a southpaw could possibly confuse and frustrate Chavez in the earlier rounds. But I really believe that Chavez is going to get to him with the body shots. Indeed, it's such a fascinating point, Larry. Maybe we should delve into the sociology of boxing for a moment. How could it be that a man with 57 professional fights, or 56, whichever is the correct number, and officially it's 56, though he claims 57, but how could it be that a man with that many fights on his dossier could never have faced a southpaw? Well, one reason is, is that he, never, he didn't fight much in the amateur ranks, and it's in the amateur ranks where you see a lot of southpaws. And many of the southpaws who are amateurs turn around and become right-handed fighters as professionals. So he's been a professional since he's been in an early teenager. So that could be one reason. He, he has fought a lot of southpaws in the gym. Uh, Jose Luis Ramirez, who was his stablemate, was a southpaw. But I think it's the combination of seeing a southpaw for the first time, plus this tall, angular, defensive-minded, mechanical southpaw tonight, that conceivably could uh, could pose a problem. But he's a typical Mexican fighter in the sense that he goes downstairs and that should eliminate whatever problems would exist. Indeed, you make a good point, Larry, because this could be the first of two southpaws in a row. Every expectation is that Chavez will angle for about against Jose Luis Ramirez if he wins tonight. Quickly now, Ray Leonard with his tip of the night on the Chavez Aguilar bout. Well, Jim, first of all, Chavez corner is expecting Aguilar to hit and run, so his body attack would be very effective because it would slow down the movement of Aguilar and enable him to really do a lot of damage. His upper body strength is incredible, and I think he has to cut the ring off in order to be make that possible. Too many times, a lot of boxers are able to out finesse uh, punchers. With Aguilar, not too much is known about him, but being a southpaw could possibly confuse Chavez in the early round, like I stated before. But he must be aggressive, not really crazy, but just initiate respect and try to keep Chavez off balance because if, if you don't do that, you ask for a lot of problems and a long night. 
And we had a brief temporarily lighting or temporary lighting problem in the arena, which has now been cleared up. So the two fighters who have waited a couple of minutes longer than they might have expected to exit their dressing rooms and head toward the ring will now begin that process. And here comes Rodolfo Aguilar of Panama. Of course, you have known the names of some great Panamanian boxers in the past, not the least of them, the great Roberto Duran, who once defeated our own Sugar Ray Leonard. Aguilar cannot yet be ranked on a level with such as Duran. You can see that he has had a total of 21 bouts, 20 of them in Panama, in either Panama City or Cologne, which he won. One time he ventured out of that nation he went to Venezuela and lost about in Caracas. There's a look at the record. Only 10 KOs, and he will need, it is expected, to demonstrate some punching power to get Chavez's respect and keep Chavez from pulling him into the ropes. I expect Aguilar to just hit and run. He needs to do that. Inside, he has no, I don't think it's going to be the right thing to do because Chavez is such an economical fighter. He's a technician and he's able to wear a man down. We saw that against uh, Edwin Rosario. Here now, 25-year-old Julio Cesar Chavez. Of those 11 victories in title bouts, 10 came at the lower weight class of super featherweight, 129 pounds. He moved up to 135 pounds to score his devastating 11th round knockout of Edwin Rosario this past fall. He's a great hero in Mexico. And I think he's very much comparable to what Ray Leonard was in, in his career. He's very personable, he's got a sunny disposition, he's very bright, and he's a winner who has his eye on the sky, on the heavens. He wants to be not just a great fighter, he told us, but a great man. 56 wins without a loss, 47 of them knockouts, as I've mentioned a couple times before, and will now mention for the last time, Chavez claims there was a 57th fight, a first round knockout, which somehow got lost in the record keeping. <laughs> Tail of the tape, and you see there the height and reach advantage, which Aguilar has on paper. It may turn out to be a disadvantage, as of course, that means that there is an extended range of rib cage available for Chavez to punch at. And here is our punch stat, which gives you a profile of the activity of the fighter. And as you can see, Chavez is a very, very active fighter. The remarkable thing about him is he throws this many punches, but he also shows defensive skills. He doesn't lead with his face. WBA rules, which will be in effect for both of the title bouts you will see tonight. Three judges scoring on the 10-point must system. No standing eight counts. A fighter can be saved by the bell only in the last round. And the three knockdown rule will be in effect. Three knockdowns in a round means that it's over. And now let's go up to ring announcer Chuck Hall for the pre-fight introduction. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Don King Productions, Main Events Monitor, Cedric Kushner Limited, the Miller Light Beer and the Miller Brewing Company, I welcome you to the Hilton Center of the Las Vegas Hilton Hotel, where tonight you will experience an evening of World Championship Boxing. These bouts are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Herb Santos Chairman, Chuck Minker, the Executive Director. The commissioners at ringside this evening are Drs. Elias Gunham, Freddie Little, Dwayne Ford, and Dr. James Nave. The WBA representative at ringside tonight, Dr. Elias Cordova. The officials assigned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for the next contest of the evening. The judges are Art Lurie, Patricia Jarman, and Lou Tabbitt. The timekeeper is Charlie Roth. Counting at the knockdowns, Al Bisek. The attending physicians at ringside, Drs. Flip Homansky, Elias Ganem, and Albert Campana. The referee for the next bout of the evening is Richard Steele. The next bout of the night, ladies and gentlemen, featuring 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Lightweight Championship of the World. Introducing, in the blue corner, fighting out of Panama City, Panama, weighing 134 and one half pounds, with a professional record of 20 wins, one defeat, with 10 KOs, he is ranked number one in the world by the WBA and is the challenger, ladies and gentlemen, Rodolfo Aguilar. 
And in the red corner, from Culiacan, Mexico, weighing 135 pounds, this young man's professional record consists of 56 wins, no defeats, with 47 KOs. He is the WBA lightweight champion of the world, Julio Cesar Chavez. Referee Richard Steele will now issue the final instructions to the two fighters. It's interesting to note that Luis okay, Spada, the veteran manager of Aguilar, was quoted in Sports Illustrated again. magazine we'll after Chavez's Take destruction of Rosario as saying no way he would put his fighter in for a title shot against Chavez. But of course, here he is. And Aguilar said himself that he talked Spada out of it. He, he insisted on the fight. We'll see which one of them was the smarter. <laughs> well, of course, Spada doesn't have to go into the ring with him. You're going to see that Chavez is going to drill a lot of right hands home, as he just did. The right hand and the left hook are the most effective punches against the southpaw because of the way the southpaw keeps his hands. Basically, the southpaw continues to move to his right, so it's difficult for you to gain proper leverage in your punches. If you have not seen Chavez before, one of the first things you will notice is that he does not waste punches. He doesn't throw for the sake of throwing. He throws when he thinks he can get inside and do damage. I think the early round is going to be problems for Chavez unless he's able to hurt his man. You see with Aguilar, very quick hands, awkward because of his style. And he's tall, he's rangy. Now see, this is where Ar Aguilar would probably make a mistake when he tried to exchange punch for punch. Chavez is a much deadlier puncher. For the moment, Aguilar doesn't appear to be frightened of Chavez, as he has been willing, as you say, Ray, to exchange punch for punch. Right hand got through the defense under the neck of Aguilar. Good defense from Chavez. Keeps those hands very high. But Jim, again, watch for the right hand and left hook. Chavez is focusing his eyes on a point at the middle of Aguilar's chest. And so far, he's landed the right three times there. Good left hand there by Aguilar to the point of Chavez's chin. Again, the right hand gets through. Hunter, get out. No hole. No hole. Break. Now this is what frustrated fighters by fighting southpaw, especially if a guy has good hand speed. And this is what I get all the time, stand busy, not being a big punch. Chavez goes to the uppercut three times. Didn't really land with any of them. There the right hand scores again. See, it's tough for Chavez to set. There seems to be a cut over the left eye. Maybe be mistaken. Or well, there's, abrasion. there's blood over the left eye of Chavez. Right hands. Close to the end of the round. And that's it. So in the final 15 seconds of round one, Julio Cesar Chavez made his presence felt with the right hand. Well, we said he had a look impressive, and he certainly looked impressive. Let's go to Tito Alba, our interpreter, to find out what's going on in the corner of the challenger. Obviously, here's the knockdown, that clean right hand. He landed several clean shots during the round. There's a second one. 
and obviously Aguilar was still shaken midway through the rest period. Almost all of the damage done in round one by the straight right hand of Julio Cesar Chavez. Aguilar begins round two backing up. Still doesn't look entirely certain of himself. Chavez feels that um, he can get in more punches by becoming more aggressive. And that is so true. Just rushing himself. But he has to be careful because you see these punches that are being thrown. They have a tendency to bruise and cut. Chavez is really starting to get a little over anxious. Yeah, he's taking a little bit more than he needs to to get inside. But there again, the right landed and backed Aguilar up. Chavez wipes the blood from his own eye and looks at it on his glove. Julio Cesar Chavez has only been cut once before. Chavez can't just stand there and take those punches like that. Although uh, Aguilar is not really a big puncher. Yeah, and he takes a punch pretty well. And he took what Edwin Rosario had to offer, and Rosario may be the hardest puncher in the lightweight division. But what's happening here, Jim, is the fact Aguilar is scoring points. Ray, do you feel like Chavez feels some urgency about this situation because he knows he does have some blood, or even if it isn't serious? I see since, uh, a sign of frustration in the eyes of Chavez because normally he's a much more composed fighter. He takes his time and he's able to put his punches together. Here against the southpaw, he's having major problems here. Well, one of the things which is said of Chavez by those who have seen him a lot is that he will take his time and be patient unless you hurt him and make him mad. I was expecting more body shots from Chavez to bring those hands down with Aguilar, to slow that movement down with Aguilar. One sign of anxiety is that Chavez, for a moment there, was chasing Aguilar around the ring. Rather than cutting the ring off on him, something he does so well. For Chavez, uh, Chavez, he needs to throw combinations and stop trying to load up with one punch. And that's what he's doing here. Fewer than 30 seconds to go in round two, as you can see. This is not really a good round for Chavez. No, a pattern of frustration beginning to develop here for Chavez. He just hit bloody Aguilar's nose with a left hook. Round two comes to a close. Chavez continuing to deal out punishment, but perhaps not at the rate he might most prefer. And now we go to Chavez's corner. I thought Aguilar made a good comeback in that round, considering what happened oh, yeah. to him at the end of the previous round. Okay, keep on fighting. You're doing very well. Now, keep on fighting with two hands. Always go upstairs. We are going to win this fight. Uh, left hook. Left hook. Left hook and right. Left hook and right. It's, it's already done. No more problem here. Let's get it work. Let's get to work. Left hook. Always left hook. Here's Chavez burring in again and landing a good solid right, right in the mouth and backing up Aguilar. Well, Aguilar did come to fight and although he may not win this one, he's uh, showing his uh, manager that uh, he's willing to stand in there with a man who's regarded as uh, one of the best fighters in the world. You see the names of the fighters and the colors of the trunks which identify them in this WBA World Lightweight Championship bout. First of a double header here from the Las Vegas Hilton on HBO. You notice that Chavez is starting to reach in with his punches. Starting to really become over anxious. Not really setting his man up. The jab would do that also to get closer. And for a guy that this tall, a southpaw, makes it quite difficult. It's not an easy task. 
perhaps Chavez has not been as disciplined about going to the body in the last round and a half as we would customarily expect from him. Well, a lot of head hunting. That's the key because this guy's so tall and rangy. He's throwing these overhand rights and left, and he's giving uh, Chavez a different look. The body shots will slow all that down. Certainly Aguilar has taken the worst of it so far, but by the same token, he seems to be gaining confidence with each passing minute. There is definitely frustration in the eyes of Chavez. I know he's just dropped his hands. Again, Aguilar is not really a big puncher, but his punches do stink. And he's starting to find avenues through which to land them, Ray. A couple of right hands to the side of Chavez's head moments ago. Another great right by Chavez. Straight up the middle. The difference we have with both fighters is the fact that although Chavez is throwing the heavier punches, Aguilar is throwing a combination. Chavez landed twice to the head during the clinch before Richard Steele could pull them apart. Up a low blow by both fighters. And Aguilar becoming increasingly more active as the third round moves along. In the final 30 seconds of round three of this first of two world championship bouts. Waiting in their dressing rooms, Marlon Starling, the WBA welterweight champ, and Mark Freeland in the role of challenger. And as round three ends, Chavez continues to stalk an increasingly more self-possessed number one challenger, Rodolfo Aguilar. And there is Marlon Starling. Very self-possessed fellow. A man who had to believe in himself because not too many other people did. He is getting tired. He's opening his mouth like crazy. He is... You have to keep on moving. How's your legs? Okay, some Vaseline. Some Vaseline. The legs are okay? Okay. Agua, agua. Water. More water. Vamos, moviendo, moviendo, Okay, move it, move it, move it. Jab, jab, please. If you had taken three to one odds that you could get here in the legal bookmakers that the fight would have ended by the end of the third round, you would have lost your money. It's even money that the fight doesn't go past six rounds. You saw it in the corner, the tiny cut on the left eyelid of Aguilar, which now ranks as a target for Chavez, but Aguilar lands twice in close. Good left by Chavez in that exchange, but he took one in return. You'll notice when Chavez attempts to throw his right hand, he brings that right foot up. And those are the type of problems that Southpaw presents. Because again, it doesn't enable you to get proper leverage behind your punches. Aguilar's doing a good job here with his combinations. Chavez now back to concentrating on the body, but having more difficulty getting through than was the case in round one. The straight right lands again. Believe it or not, the best punch that I found he took on the south court, not with a straight right hand, but a looping right hand. Because it goes inside of, his, of, his, of the gloves. 
Now there's blood coming from the nose of Aguilar as well as from above his left eye. That's the right hand there that uh, Chavez threw. But again, Jim, he needs to throw combinations. Chavez needs to throw more punches. Put him in bunches. Goes the right hand again. And the looping right hand that you suggested landed that time. Increasingly, Chavez looks to come up underneath to get to the body. But he has to work his way inside and be a little more composed. Good right hand by Aguilar. Tilted Chavez for a moment. Well, certainly as we proceed toward the closing seconds of round four, there can be no doubt in Julio Cesar Chavez's mind that he's in against a qualified opponent. Commission again by Aguilar. Shafir has starting to come on in. I thought that was a, a sign of frustration on Chavez's part that he would do that. Aguilar is fighting a very sophisticated fight. He's not running as uh, most of us thought he would. He's fighting uh, what it, one of his handlers called a, a technically punishing fight. He's trying to stay outside of Chavez's range and then jump in with those quick long left hands. Let's go to Harold Letterman, our unofficial official official, to see his scoring of the fight. Well, thank you, Larry. I've got it 38 to 37 in favor of Rodolfo Aguilar in a close fight. Uh, I give Chavez an extra point for the clean knockdown in round one. But uh, Aguilar is doing a great job with hand speed, and I gave him the last three rounds because of the fact that he's landed so many punches. I have the exact same score on my card, which means that the man we have designated as the heir apparent to the pound for pound championship uh, is going to have to show us some stuff and come from behind. And if he's if he's worthy of that uh, title, then he will come from behind. Chavez fairly sprints out of his corner to begin round five, and Richard Steele says, "Hold on, just a second. He forgot his mouthpiece. Yeah, he'll need that. Steel referee Chavez's destruction of Edwin Rosario, so he has seen at close range what Julio Cesar Chavez is capable of. So far, he hasn't seen the same kind of performance tonight, but that right hand got across the top of the guard of Rodolfo Aguilar. Aguilar landing the jab two or three times. Chavez feels constrained to have to leap in to throw the left. Chavez is more so following Aguilar around the ring instead of cutting the ring off. He's he been to, chasing him since round two, Ray. And and then doing so because of the movement of Aguilar, it's been difficult for Chavez to put his punches together. He's been loading up since round one. Good that took by Chavez. And you saw that the right sent Aguilar reeling for the moment. Aguilar begins to hang on. Aguilar did the right thing, tie his man up, but now he must move because he's still on Clear Street. Another right hand. Now we may see more combinations by Chavez. There's that right hand, that beautiful looking right hand. And Aguilar's left eye is beginning to close up, Ray. It comes, the punching of Chavez, the way he throws that looping right hand, because it comes on the blind side of the southpaw. Aguilar won't step back. Continues to land punches, even amid his temporary distress. Chavez begins to look a little more composed again. Oh, 
But we near the end of round five, and as Larry Merchant pointed out, it was even money here as to whether this bout would make it through six rounds. That was a much better round for Chavez if he had it. Maybe he had the habit of laying back after knocking him down in the first round. He might have relaxed a little. I think he's back into it now. Are you tired? I'm asking you if you're tired. Respirando fuerte, respirando fuerte. A deep breath. Breathe deeply. Okay. Get the air out. Get the air out. Get the air out. At, at, at this time, all the strong your job. Let's watch as Chavez goes to work. Comes in close to left. Always moving forward. Always moving forward. So, Mr. Aguilar is proving that uh, General Noriega isn't the only lightweight in Panama right now. We asked Rodolfo Aguilar if he were acquainted with General Noriega. And he insisted only de periodico, solamente de newspapers. Six begins and Travis continues to stalk at close range. Chavez needs to be very careful about the way he, he plants his feet. You see, he has both feet together. It's easy to, to be knocked down. It doesn't matter how big or small punch you are, because you're off balance. Well, there's a certain arrogance in any great fighter, and you get the impression that Chavez doesn't believe Aguilar can hurt him. Aguilar appears to be wearing down on Those upper cuts, and then look at right hand, look at that beautiful shot. Aguilar right looking hand. for a place to fall after the right hand. And his corner is up on the apron. Steele looks at the corner as if to say, do you want in? And they do want in. And Richard Steele stops the fight. A great fighter does what he has to do to look great. And after having some difficulty for a few rounds following a first round knockdown, Chavez goes to work and ends the fight sensationally. One minute, 13 seconds of the sixth round. Thank you. And Julio Cesar Chavez runs his record officially to 57 and 0. So it was a fight in which there were more than a few moments of frustration for Julio Cesar Chavez. And if he proved anything tonight, Ray, it is that he can overcome temporary frustration and go on to knock his opponent out. It was indeed frustration. And the right hand pretty much started everything. Aguilar for a pretty good fight, but what wore Aguilar down was the inside fighting and the loop of right hands. That right hand there proved the effect against Southpaw. Aguilar at this point here is out of it. He wanted a place to fall down after Chavez landed the right hand to the temple. One of the vulnerable areas which can sometimes create a knockout. As you see this right hand land, you'll see right next to the eye on the temple and Aguilar said, that'll do. I'm sure that Chavez will go back and watch the tape and he will find that the best way to fight a southpaw is to be a little more composed, the loop in right hand. It's a beautiful shot. I remember you against a southpaw named Ayub Kaluli. It wasn't your best looking performance either, but you were able to come back, dominate the late rounds and win the fight, just as Chavez was able to do here. And here are the final punch stat computations, Chavez throwing. 273 punches, landing 143 of them. You see that Aguilar was the much busier fighter, though without landing nearly as many blows. And right now, let's go up to ring announcer Chuck Hall for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, one minute, 
13 seconds of the sixth round. Referee Richard Steele stops the bout. The winner by a TKO still undefeated and still the WBA lightweight champion of the world, Julio Cesar Chavez. And now let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring with the winner. Julio, did you relax after the first round knockdown and, and give him a chance to show his stuff in the next three rounds? Que si descansaste después que lo tumbaste en el primer round y lo dejaste que cogiera un poco de aire. No, la verdad no, la verdad que Aguilar me resultó un poco difícil por su estatura. In reality, Aguilar resulted a very difficult man. Was he difficult because of his height, because he was left-handed, or because of both, or because he was just a good fighter? Era eh, difícil porque es más alto, porque es izquierdo zurdo, o por ambas razones. Bueno, ¿por qué, ¿por qué zurdo y por qué es muy alto? Because he's too tall and he is left-handed, he's southpaw. Además, no, no es excusa, pero... This is not an excuse, but... Ando malo en el estómago, subí con diarrea. Feel, I don't feel uh, too good in my stomach, I have a diarrhea. Eh, did you feel that coming into the fight, or did it did it give you some problems as the fight went along? Did you sentiste esto antes de venir a pelear o empezó cuando subiste al ring? No, la diarrea me empezó después del pesaje porque right after the weigh in. Yo creo que la comida me cayó mal. I think the uh, food what I ate today didn't agree with me. Incluso ahorita me está doliendo el estómago. Uh, uh, right now I have a stomach ache. Did he feel urgency about? getting rid of his opponent after he felt a little blood over his eye or because of his stomach problems? Sentiste urgencia en acabar con él cuando le viste la sangre en la cara o porque te molestaba el estómago? Me, me molestaba mucho el estómago y además me pegó un cabezazo. He, uh, my, my stomach was bothering me and also he hit me with the head. One last thing, the other day when we uh, interviewed him, we asked him who he thought was the best fighter pound for pound in the world. He thought for a minute and then he raised his hand and smiled sheepishly and he admitted that he was. Did he think he proved that again tonight? Cuando te entrevistamos hace unos días, de que, quién era el mejor boxeador libra por libra, tú pensaste por un momento y de repente levantaste la mano diciendo, soy yo, que si yo ahora piensas lo mismo que pensaste en esa oportunidad. Buenos días, Liz. estoy tratando de ser uno de los mejores del mundo. Yo sé que lo voy a lograr. I'm trying to be one of the best in the world and I know I'm going to achieve that. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Thank I love you so I love you so much. Back to ringside. <laughs> All right, so Julio Cesar Chavez has taken care of his business. A final word on that fight from you, Ray. This mantle of best fighter pound for pound in the world. You've worn it at various times during your career. Does it create a kind